Hi John, nice to meet you. Hi. That you have time. Um, John, I read about you that you are a game designer uh -huh. and even a mu musician. Correct. So where would you define yourself? More on the game side, on the musician side? side where did you start uh, in, the, in the gaming say, business? I would say so. Uh, when we set up our company Sensible Software originally, myself and Chris who went to school together were playing in a band together. Uh, and we actually got into um, games by accident. I was around his house a lot. He was learning uh, computing, I, was, I studied art, and uh, he got a job with the company, and uh, they, he asked me to help him with some art, because he was struggling actually. They then gave me a contract, we then did one game for them, and then about nine months later we decided that we could make more money on our own. We set up our company on what was called a, a government enterprise scheme in the UK, they gave you £40 a week as young kids, when we were 18, 19, this is, this is good money, uh -huh. and um, we uh, set about making Parallax, we uh, were very lucky, we went, two months we'd been doing Parallax, we went on a train up to Manchester to see Ocean, who were the, one of the biggest publishers at the time. By yourself? Uh, so you, you just the two of us, just the two of us, yeah, yeah, we, we phoned up I think before we went, I think we did. <laughs> um, uh, and we left, we le went there on our first day of ever doing this, we left with a cheque for a thousand pounds, a contract for five thousand uh, pounds, and our game was signed up. So we came back smoking cigars on the train and celebrating. We made it in the buffet in the buffet car, thinking we'd made it. Yeah, but it was a we were lucky. We had the perfect start, and from that we um, we produced Whizball and Galaxy Birds and Microprose Soccer and Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit and International 3D Tennis. Oh no, and Insects in Space. They're all our Commodore 64 games, and we did them all in a a period of about five, six, four or five years. So yeah, it's a classic start. Classic start. Classic. R literally working body. from yeah from the bedroom of Chris's house. I have it in my attic. Yes, like everyone's. Well, a lot of people see 64s. But but not dusty. It's. Uh, it's it's preserved enough to play again. Okay. So yes. Some people uh, have it in the attic, um, perhaps or in in the cellar, and and in a trunk, and that time is over. It's in a red. Microprose bag, from what I remember, last time I saw it. Okay, yeah, so as long as it's not been eaten by rats or covered in damp, it will still be there. Yeah. Your heart is still with it. I, I, I love the C64 times and the Amiga time. In terms of how I feel about it, I'm extremely pleased because uh, as an industry, we suffer from not retaining our heritage. You know, you've got books which go back thousands of years, you've got great paintings which go back 200 years, you've got music which goes back as far as it will be retained, television, film. We tend to have this behaviour we've had in the last 15, 20 years to just let everything die. Mm. And I think it's very good that the, the good quality stuff is preserved. It's part of actually human history, we should be doing this in everything. So. This is a very good question, actually. Um, when I told my father, initially, especially when I went to college and said I was finishing college, and I said, I want to play in the band, I want to do my band with Chris, we'll get a van and we'll drive around and play music, you know. My father's someone who's been a, a very good uh, amateur actor his whole life, but never done it professionally. So he was like thinking, what are you doing, you know, just keep it as something you want to do and don't go too, too much into it. So when we, um, when we uh, got into games, it was something we did basically because we had no job. And we started doing it and it started to work. Uh, funnily enough, my mother was pleased when I did some consulting work for a company in Oxford, because I'd gone to Oxford, and Oxford was good because it's the, the education. Name, the name, This Oxford. is ridiculous, okay. association. <laughs> and I just sat in a hotel, I remember, making the Trivial Pursuit character with the big green nose and watching the snooker final on the television in the hotel is what I remember about this trip. Uh, my father, it took many more years. My father, I think I was 26, maybe, before he said to me, Actually, it was it's good what you've done. John, yes? one thing mm -hmm. uh, for you. It's a Wii Points card. Do you know it? No, no. Uh, with these points, these are actually 2,000 points, uh -huh. you can download the classic C64 games to your Nintendo Virtual okay. Console. Cool. What would be your favorite game you would download? I think probably California games. California games? Yes, yeah, so I'm a champion of European development, but it's actually a, a US game. It's a US game, yeah. okay. So, would you please write it down uh -huh. on your points card, your favorite game, and sign it.
Thanks. Okay. And thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kids these days that they'll play a game and and they'll they'll play another game, mm -hmm. but they they haven't got this. I mean, compared to the Spectrum, which was it was its arch enemy, it, it was it was it was such a powerful machine. We fell in love with it straight away. As magical as a Wii would seem to a child now, 